I'm gonna reload my crossbow right here, try and take this guy out if I can. Boom, right there, nice headshot. And nope, I, you're not gonna shoot me, sir. No, no, you're not gonna shoot me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get you now, though. There we go. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the Ronin, and we are here once again at Denustica. Well, technically, we've never really seen me besiege this town on screen, but I decided, hey, you know what? It's probably a good idea that you check this out because we're just about to lose every single one of our siege engines in quick succession. This is probably the worst possible situation you can be in because it just leaves one of them up for an extended period of time and that, that one is then going to get bombarded by a number of siege engines and so on from the enemy and it's going to just be an overall mess. However, however, things are not all that bad because even though we are at war against three different factions, yes three once again, <sighs> yes, the Tetsujin decided to declare war against the Western Empire and as a result we're now having an additional opponent to worry about. Thankfully, however, that is not really that big a deal, because the Western Empire is not that big a threat at all. They seem to be very much on the back foot, and even if you take a look over here, you can see the Western Empire is basically done. They are not really going to have anything that they can do against us. Same thing, kind of, with the Southern Empire as well. The Azerai still have a good amount of fight left in them, which is obviously a bit of a problem, but... You know, hopefully we'll beat them down and uh, make sure that they know who's boss. Anyway, the Batanians are doing fantastically, you can see right there. Kuzate also doing fantastically. We've paid them over 100,000 dinars. That's just absolutely insane. Sturgeons. I, I, I really don't know what happens with the Sturgeons, to be honest. I feel like every single game I play, with the exception of the one that I actually played a Sturgeon and supported them, as much as I possibly could, they always kind of stay around average combat strength until, like, the late game when they get steamrolled by some other faction that just has an insane amount of combat strength and there's nothing really they can do about it at that point. It's a bit weird. I don't really know why that happens. Vlandia is also a little bit weird. I don't know. They seem to be hovering around 5,000 most of the time, and it's a bit strange. I don't know. I don't know why they do that, but anyway, Denustakur is going to be falling before us, hopefully relatively soon, but you can see here their ballistas are doing a fantastic job of dealing some pretty good damage to our siege engines right now, and that's exactly the problem with them. I personally feel like ballistas are... It, it's a bit of a... that's the thing. It's a bit of a mixed bag. On the one hand, I think that ballistas are really good because they're fast to build, you can replace them almost instantaneously, pretty much, and they deal good damage. However, they do have a very small amount of HP, so against the trebuchet, it's going to be one attack and you're out kind of thing. However, if you use catapults, then it's basically the same thing, but catapults are a little bit less accurate and, a little, and do a little bit less DPS. However, on that note... I personally still prefer ballistas. I mean, I don't prefer fighting ballistas, just bear that in mind, because I personally feel like ballistas are extremely difficult to fight. As you can no doubt tell, we're having some pretty major issues even destroying these, and we've gotten the walls down now, so my trebuchets should be focusing on only destroying the ballistas, but you can see here that they're, e they're still having problems. They're still having problems. Although, we do have the walls down now, so technically I could go in there and we could do some good damage. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave this the way it is for the moment. And I was actually hoping that I might be able to bait out one of these Southern Empire armies, because that was the main reason why I did this to begin with. I thought to myself, you know what, let's, let's put the nail in the coffin for them, shall we? You know, just put the nail in the coffin, try to um, eliminate them as much as we could, and then just go from there. And as you can see, I've actually been given Cyronea, which is amazing. I actually didn't realize that this was happening, but they uh, took it just now, I believe, very, very recently. And that means that I have another town to look after, which is probably not great. Because, uh, yeah, I, I don't know whether that's really going to work right now, considering I am actually taking Denustica. Amusingly enough, I think I might even get Denustica as as uh, one of the, the thieves that I have control over as well. But we'll see what happens with that. Anyway, I have a number of perks here that we're going to be able to spend. You can see here, engineering, basically pointless, as I've said before. The perks in it, in my current game version, are not working. 
And then we, we obviously have a, a couple of other leadership perks here. Now, make a difference. Your kills have a 100% higher effect on friendly troops' battle morale, and archer troops generate 10% more shared experience. That actually sounds very cool. And then we all have um, lead by example, which is, well, the first one is not implemented. And the secondary effect is cavalry troops generate 10% more shared experience. Well, just for the sheer value that it may very well work. I don't know whether it is or not, but our kills giving 100% higher battle morale is going to be the pick that I'll take here. And we also leveled up, so I'm going to be specking into something I don't exactly know what to spec into, to be honest. I really do want to spec into something useful, but I am in a bit of a quandary here, because on the one hand, I'd like to spec into some tactics, although I already have the disorganized time reduction, so I don't actually think it's necessary for me to go for any additional tactics at this point. But maybe we want to go for some more crossbows. Maybe we want to go for some more riding skill. I don't know. I mean, maybe more pole arms. Maybe more pole arms would help. I don't know, really. Let's go for some more endurance, though, however, because I'd like to level up uh, riding and athletics. Maybe I wanted to put another point in that. But I'm using pole arms quite often, so I thought, why not? Let's put another point in it and see what happens. Oh, my cohesion is very low. Look at that. I was I was not paying attention to my cohesion at all. I was literally just watching these numbers at the top of the screen, and I'm like, oh, yes, the numbers are going down and feeling very jolly about it. Anyway, we're going to be heading into the siege now. 315 enemies in the garrison here. Should be pretty easy and, well, quite straightforward for us to deal with. Oh, no. I think I might have just jinxed myself in that very moment. Hopefully that is not the case. Okay. So where do we have to go? Okay, so there's... There, oh, wow, these walls are extreme... What? That's... Okay, not a big fan of this. i got to say that. Can you tell why? Yeah, can you tell why? Look at that. This wall is open, and this wall is open. It's basically the same exact area, you know? So the enemy can pretty much just concentrate their archer and ranged units... Um, right in that area and they can just rain down death and destruction upon us and we really don't have any kind of counterplay whatsoever. I think that's the main thing that I generally tend to highlight in these kinds of situations because counterplay, that's really important, especially in a game like this where you're going to need, you know, strategical advantages, tactical options to be able to make a difference in a variety of different ways. However, Unfortunately, in this case, it's not really making that much difference. Anyway, let's just see if I can maybe level up my one-handed, because someone rightly pointed out that I haven't really leveled up my one-handed very, very well. And that's that's true. That's true. I need to do something about that. So let me see if I can maybe do some damage. Stab him. Ah. Ah, oh, these guys are way too good for me, unfortunately. My... Now, that's the thing. I have a two-handed slash one-handed weapon, right? Well, I don't know whether you know this, but when you use a one-handed slash two-handed hybrid weapon in the in the one hand, so if you use it in one hand, you're going to be swinging it 33% slower, at least that used to be the calculation, but you're going to be swinging it slower, whether it's 33% or not, doesn't really matter, but slower than you would a normal one-handed weapon. So generally, it is always a better idea if you want to have a fast swinging weapon to use just a one-handed, so nothing else. No, no hybrid weapons, no nothing. The main reason why you want to use a hybrid weapon is for the utility and the versatility that it is going to bring to your combat style. But for me specifically, the only reason why I'm using this is just literally because of that. Versatility is, is very good, in my opinion. You know, being able to level up two different things is the way to go. You know, you want to be leveling up a lot of different skills here. And indeed, you know, leveling up one hand, it is going to be very useful, considering it's going to give me a lot of extra skill points. I'm going to reload my crossbow right here, try and take this guy out if I can. Boom, right there. Nice headshot. And nope, I, you're not going to shoot me, sir. No, no, you're not going to shoot me. I'm going to I'm going to get you now though. There we go. <laughs> that guy was like, "Ah, I got murdered." Okay, what about that fellow? Yes. There we go. Take him down. And this guy's going to try and shoot me, but you failed. Good work, sir. And now we'll just reload and see what we can do. Nice. That was another nice hit right there. Okay. Not too bad. Not too bad. Oh, hello. Hello. Ah, I thought that was a I really thought that was a hit right there, but no. No such luck. Okay, so yeah, as you can no doubt tell, as soon as I initiated the charge order, we actually started to win. 
amusingly enough, because obviously before that, my people were just auto-delegating. I've said this before, but I thought I'd just reiterate that in my opinion, when you have these kinds of situations, it's not really anything to do with how the defenses of the opponent are, because if the walls are down already, it's not, not going to make a huge difference what kind of strategy you use at that point. It's basically just a case of rushing in there and trying to eliminate as many units as you can possibly get your hands on. And yeah, okay, you know, in some situations the enemy is going to form a very, very good defense and they're going to have a deadly bottleneck that is going to provide them with a lot of damage dealing capability. But for the most part, you just need to charge in there, you know? You just need to charge in there. The AI is not that smart. They're not going to form a tight seal around the broken off wall and so on. So it's generally a much better idea to just be like, you know what? Let's just go for it. Reckless abandon, you know? Just reckless abandon. Just kill them all. And that's what we got right there. And that really helped us out quite a bit. Okay. So basically for this, I'm just going to be taking, uh, I don't even want to take any of these, to be honest. I guess I'll just take these guys. I won't take the Imperial Militia or anything like that. These are going to be going over to my um, to my army and my party, uh, party clan members and all that stuff. And uh, bear in mind that I have been uh, running around Tetsujin territory trying to increase the strength of our party clan members. Party? No. <laughs> Party clan members' armies. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. Ooh, it's been a while since we've actually gotten a crossbow perk. So let's have a look. Increase the morale of each tier 1 to 3 troops by 10%. And reduce upkeep of ranged troops in the governed garrison. That's if you're a governor, of course. And then your ranged troops gain plus 1 experience every day. And ranged troops in the garrison provide 30% more security. So the only thing we have to worry about here is morale versus experience. I'm going to take the experience because morale is at 100. And I don't think it's going to change that that badly or that much anytime soon so we're just going to do that and then we have one handed here that has leveled up reduce the effect of wielding a shield on your combat movement speed we're not using a shield so that is basically pointless however while mounted your one handed weapon damage is increased by 5% both of these are pretty much useless but I am going to be taking shield bearer just in case I actually decide to use a shield at some point maybe there's a very fiendish siege or something along those lines that is going to cause so many difficulties that we're going to have to do something about it and finally equip a shield but anyway let's just take a quick look at what we want to do here there's 59 what there's 59,000 in money here that's crazy okay let's try and get all of it shall we or well not all of it but most of it Oh yeah, this is what I like to see, because I'm actually doing pretty badly on money right now, I don't know whether you've noticed, but my money situation is diminishing pretty quickly, so if I can just get a little bit of extra cash right there and then move on, because I'm going to need to go over to Syro Nea and actually make sure it's doing okay. Obviously we're not at war against the Kuzate at the moment, which is the main reason why that hasn't been taken back almost instantly. I'm going to be taking this for myself as well. I cannot trust any of these other vassals with owning a town. And that's the thing. I don't really want to be doing that because I think that that is um, kind of a waste, to be honest. I really don't want to have so many towns under my own command. I, I'm not that greedy of a person. I really don't. I personally would prefer them to actually just do their jobs and not defect, you know? That would be nice, but they have shown in the past that they're not really to be trusted that much, so I'm generally tending to be a little bit selfish in this in this regard because I don't want the Tetsujin to become even weaker upon losing more and more and more vassals. So that's generally what I'm attempting to do here. Anyway, let's go over to the horse merchant right quick and get a bunch more stuff. We also want to buy a bunch of food supplies. I'm just going to buy absolutely everything that I can get my hands on right there. And, oh yeah, I should probably also sell, shouldn't I? Yeah, I should also sell because we have a number of different things that we will be able to get rid of here. And I don't think there's anything here that I really want to keep, so I will probably just end up selling most of it. There we go. 
That is perfectly fine, 42,000, and we own this. So let's go over to Improved Garrison. We're going to be recruiting from the region. We're going to re recruit prisoners over time, and we're also going to set the maximum amount to 150. Technically, what I could do is I could set this to literally, like, I don't know, 500 or 600 or something like that and then it would recruit until it reaches the maximum capacity that the town can handle but i don't really want to do that because i think that that is a bit too powerful for what the mod actually does and i'd like to keep it just that little bit more balanced obviously it is completely up to you what you decide to do because this is my game you have your game you know that's that's just how it goes anyway let's just see if i can maybe level up a couple of people because i do have a number of war horses that are going to be extremely you know put to extremely good use and let's get some more naganata riders some more trained archers mounted longbowmen i like all of these guys gonna be taking all of them thank you very much let's take some of these guys too wow there's so many there's so many really really good units in here that's exactly the reason why i also love taking these towns that have been taken by some of our vassal friends because they're going to place so many useful units in here that it is just insane it is really really good anyway what we're going to do now is we're just going to manage the town real quick and then we're just going to put like about thirty thousand in the reserves here and what we're going to do is we're going to increase the settlement loyalty actually the loyalty is 100 right now can loyalty go further than 100? I'm actually unsure about that, but whatever the case, we're just going to add a, a bunch more construction um, projects on here, uh, just purely for the fact that I might forget and not come back here at any point, and then at least they're doing something, you know what I mean? Because we want them to do something, you know, the amount of uptime that we have in these construction projects is extremely important in comparison to having nothing, you know, because then their construction... Um, the construction stat is going towards nothing at all, and it's a huge waste. So that's the reason why I'm queuing up a whole bunch of stuff, even if that stuff is not particularly useful in any way, shape, or form. But leveling everything up at the same time is not that bad. It's not that bad to do. All right, so we have a number of other items. Uh, items. Another <laughs> number of other troops that we have in here, but they are not Tetsujin. So I won't be taking any of these. Technically, uh, you know what? You know what? I Actually, I could take a couple and then I could just give them to my uh, to my clan's, um, clan's army. So you could see there. Boom. Look at that. Now he's got 104 people, which is actually quite nice. So this, this is actually a pretty good way to do it because obviously for me specifically, I don't really want to use these units myself, but they could be used for a number of our friends in our army and i think that actually makes a pretty good amount of sense so we're just going to do that a little bit wow they have they've gained so much space in their armies it's actually kind of crazy to be honest okay let's just take both of these high tier troops then no gand no gand wow how, how many do you have now he has 159 that's pretty insane. Okay, let's just give him both of those then, I guess. And we're just going to keep the Tetsujin units as much as we possibly can. And there we have it. Okay, so we now have 572. Yes, indeed, 572 and counting, actually, because we do have a number of people that might still be wounded or something like that. But yeah, anyway, I I think I probably need some horses, right? Yeah, I think I probably need some horses because otherwise we're... Oh, no, maybe not. I'm actually faster than this guy? He must have no horses whatsoever. I assume that to be the case. He seems to be on foot. So, yeah, that was easy enough, wasn't it? Okay, so does he have any Tetsujin? No, he doesn't have any Tetsujin, so we don't really need to worry about him. And a huge amount of really nice loot right there. And then we can move on. Oh, yes. Okay, I'm liking it. So far, everything seems to be going pretty nicely. I'd like to be able to eliminate the, um, the Southern Empire, if at all possible. So I think what I'll do after this is I will be heading on over to one of the nearby Southern Empire fiefs, and I'll try to take it and just try to just get them, get them gone, you know? Just get them gone as much as we possibly can, and that's pretty much it. So let's have a look. What do we have? Vostrum, Poros, Lycaron. Okay, those are the things that we probably want to go for. So I'm going to go to Vostrum right now, and I know what you're thinking. Do you want me to focus on the Azariah, or do you want me to focus on the Southern Empire? That's the point. I actually don't know. 
The main reason why I'm going for Vostrum right now is because it is quite close to our own territory. You can see that right here. Lavinia Castle is right here. Danusica is obviously right there as well. And you can see that this is our territory right now. It seems okay. It seems to be dealing dealing with all the interlopers and invaders to our space pretty nicely. And I would love to be able to take Hubyar, but I think, I think she might actually be going to do that. Yes, indeed. She is doing that. That is pretty fantastic. So that means that I don't even have to worry about it. And we're going to be giving this to Hanzo, I think. What does he have? Oh, he only has one. All right. Okay, fine. I'll just support him then. I'm a little bit dubious about giving it to Hideyoshi because I think to myself, you know, he might very well just leave if he gets enough castles or something. And that would be atrocious. But uh, you know how it is. Sometimes it just happens and sometimes we just have to take a chance. Who knows? So let's have a look here. Are they going too fast for me? Uh, actually not. What? How are they? How are they slower than I am? Are they disorganized? I think they might have just had a fight, and that's the reason why they are moving so slow. It might also be because their morale is low, because I know that sometimes when your morale is low, you do tend to have a little bit of a speed deficit or a disadvantage in some ways. So that might that might make a difference. Anyway, we're just going to let these guys just randomly run around. I don't really care about them too much. I mean, oh, that's the, that's the ultimate insult, isn't it? The ultimate insult is literally to ignore them. And that is, well, that, that's what that's what's happening right here. That's what's happening right here. I'm basically just ignoring them as much as we possibly can. And then just, well, throwing rocks at them. Yes. It's hard to believe that rocks can actually do that much damage against stone, isn't it? But I suppose they're quite big rocks and me smash and so on and so forth. But yeah, anyway. Oh, we're making peace with the... <laughs> okay, that is actually hilarious. We are going to be receiving a decent tribute, but we've basically done nothing to the Western Empire whatsoever, so this is very amusing to me. We've not attacked them at all, as far as I'm aware. I would assume that maybe some of our vassals might have engaged some of theirs, but that is pretty much it. I don't think they've done anything else. So, ah, seems like I didn't gain any additional perks. Bit weird. I did get a notification that something had happened, but maybe one of our companions leveled up or something like that, so... Anyway... Let's see how we're doing here. Oh, they have... What? Their walls were super, super... Oh, dear. Right. Uh, I have 40 hours, so I basically have not even two days, pretty much, to get these walls down. And I don't know whether I'm going to even be able to deal with the garrison here, because they have a lot of archers... And, ooh, the Tetsujin just got themselves taken prisoner, as you can see if I scroll up here. Yep, as you can see. They got taken prisoner by uh, the Azurai. That's very strange. I, the last I saw that army of the Tetsujin, she had over a thousand units. So it must have been that they took advantage of the fact that they went into a relatively large siege and they were wounded or weakened and then they pounced that's probably what happened so oh that's pretty bad that is pretty bad okay well uh the only thing i can do right now i guess is literally just try to deal as much damage as possible should i try to go in here i don't really want to do that i feel like that is going to result in huge casualties for me and i don't really want to do that so what we're going to do instead is we're going to concentrate on dealing with the army that defeated our friends and yeah it seems like there are some other things going on there a lot of drama all right so the drama has uh, apparently concluded i'm actually not entirely sure because as you can see right here we can basically just do an auto resolve and then win instantly against these people nothing really to worry about there i will be taking most of these units just purely for the fact that i can give them to my own armies I'm not going to use them myself, of course. I should have actually stopped at Razik a little bit before I went over here, but I was a little bit single-minded about getting here as fast as possible, so that was the reason for that. Anyway, let's just give all these Azurai units over here. We also have a number of people that I can indeed level up. And here we go. I'm going to go for some more mounted units. I've used all my war horses now, which is somewhat unfortunate. 
but I, that just means that I have to go for some more foot archers then or something like that. All right, so that seems pretty good to me. And now we have another person over here that we will probably want to defeat as soon as possible. Habiar, as you can see, only has 264. That's hilarious. All right, so it seems like this is a pretty large army right here. So we're going to go into a manual battle. Technically, we could have just gone in with an auto resolve, but where's the fun in that, right? Yes, where's the fun in that? So I'd like to... I'd like to have some fun here and see if I can maybe level up my pole arms a little bit more. And yes, I know, I know, I still don't have a Naganata of any kind whatsoever, even though it would be nice to be able to use one, because I have had a lot of fun with slashing pole arms in the past. But I feel like I've actually been doing a little bit better with my thrusting pole arm recently. I'm not entirely sure why that is. Oh, took him off his mount. Nice. I like that. I like that a lot. All right, so let's just tell my archers to go into a nice loose formation right there. And we're going to be telling our cavalry to get into a good uh, good place as well. Maybe to try a little bit of a flank action. Would be quite cool if we could participate in that flank action as well, by the way. That would be quite cool, but I'm not sure if we can really make it work. Considering we have an, uh, another vassal here, I believe, that is doing their own thing i don't think yes as you can see right there they're not actually listening to my orders right now which is the main reason why there are a number of people charging in randomly and just doing whatever they want which is i suppose fine i, I don't have a problem with it but it's definitely not efficient in the way that i would have liked but you know can't really do much about it just gonna have to roll with it as much as we possibly can and let's just take our guys over here let's move these fellows over here too and I, you know what? I think I can probably just charge our cavalry in right now. Seems like the enemy has mostly recruits. I'm a little bit, um, <laughs> I don't know. I'm a little bit surprised by this because I initially thought that these guys had some pretty good units. Ah, oh, there we go. There's an Azurai Master Archer. Right. Okay. And? I think that's basically it. Maybe they'll receive some reinforcements or something like that, and, and those reinforcements will actually be slightly better than what they're currently fielding, but it seems to me like there's a bit of a weird thing going on right there. I really thought that there was going to be, I don't know, more high tier, because their combat strength, considering they're up against a thousand units... Whoa, I got hit by a massive amount right there. I got hit, shot in the face. Yeah, that's the reason for that. That is indeed the reason for that. That was pretty awful. But thankfully, we're still alive. We're still alive. Ah. Oh. Got shot in the wrist. Don't think he would have died from that, to be honest. But it's an RPG. It's a game. <laughs> you know. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, it, it really depends, obviously. It really depends. I mean, what if it's a poison arrow? You know, then he's going to die in about, you know, a week or something. It depends on how strong the poison is, obviously. But still. <laughs> uh, oh, well. Never mind. I mean, it's been a while since I've died, I think. I actually don't know. But uh, it happens. It happens. I actually really wanted to survive there because I was having a lot of fun doing the couch lancing thing. I've not really been a huge fan of couch lancing in previous series or even in Warband. I used to be pretty terrible at it. Still am to a certain degree. But I feel like it's a lot more fun now because the recharge time on the skill is not that much, you know, it's, it's, it's seemingly quite a bit more fluid and smoother to use, which I quite like. So yeah, it's definitely improved the enjoyability factor of the whole thing. Anyway, I'm going to take these guys prisoner because that's what we do. Indeed, that is what we do. I'm just going to leave that unit just so someone else can take it if they want. And we'll just take the rest of those units there. Okay. So we're running out of cohesion a little bit. Farina actually did perish in that fight. I think Farina is indeed a uh, an Azurai vassal, so that's pretty good. I like that. You know, it's, it's pretty nice. Okay, so let's get some more siege towers up and running right here. And we're going to get some trebuchets. There we are. All right. Yeah, siege camp is built super, super fast. I actually wonder who has the engineering skill that's making this possible because it seems like it's so, so quick in comparison to what we experienced at the very beginning of the series where I would start a siege and then it would literally force me into calling for another vassal or something like that just to help me out or what have you. I think that was actually in the Duelist series. So scratch, scratch that comment for this particular one because I don't think we've done too many sieges um with any vassals in this one so anyway 
I think we should be fine here, but they have level 2 walls, which is unfortunate. But they have only catapults. This is the main reason why I love fighting against catapults and not fighting against ballistas. Because you can see here, look at the HP levels of all of my trebuchets. With the exception of this one, every single one is above 50% HP. If these were ballistas, they would have already eliminated one and they probably would be very close to eliminating another one that's how effective they can be even if they do get eliminated in one shot as i've said before they are so quick to replace it's basically like they haven't been destroyed at all so there's pretty much a constant stream of damage coming in whereas there's a couple of seconds in between the catapults being built and then being destroyed so it gives the trebuchets just that little bit extra time to retarget the next people that you know you know the next um next siege equipment that they want to destroy anyway there's the last of the walls and i'm pretty uh, pretty confident that we'll be able to go in here and pretty much win i could have stayed outside and um, injured them even further but look this is the, this is what i'm talking about this is the kind of thing i really like i like the fact that there are uh, that you know there's a, a like a, a breach here and i like the fact that there's a breach over here it makes it so much more balanced for the overall um, attackers and defenders, because obviously, if it, you know, if a siege is in favor of one side or the other, obviously this is from a gameplay standpoint, not from a realistic standpoint. Because if it's from a realistic standpoint, then obviously the defenders want to be able to win as easily as possible, and the same thing for the attackers. So they're going to try and come up with a strategy that will provide them with the least casualties and so on. But in a gameplay situation, you kind of want to have people that are... What, what, what am I actually shooting at right there? Oh, it's just a catapult. I actually thought that was a person's head for some reason. Okay, whatever. <laughs> anyway, yes. Anyway, so as I said, from a gameplay standpoint, generally it would be considered a good idea to make it as balanced as possible. Because, I mean, obviously there are going to be different difficulties, I guess dependent on the siege and I'm just gonna shoot my own guy because he's being annoying and getting in my way apparently <laughs> but yeah we're just gonna continue shooting a little bit here and see if I can maybe get a little bit of extra experience in crossbows I'd like to be able to get to 125 I feel now that the uh, crossbow skill has been implemented in such a nice way I'd, I'd really like to utilize it more it feels to me like I haven't really used crossbows that much it makes me a bit sad because I personally like ranged combat in this game quite a bit. Um, ever since the, the ranged combat rework, because they basically made it so that each individual ranged weapon has like a different feel to it. And when you aim it, you can feel how different it is in comparison, um, you know, between the, 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 the three different archetypes. Because obviously you have crossbows, thrown, and indeed regular bows. And let me tell you, Using a bow is extremely different from how it used to be. And uh, a crossbow, I'm not entirely sure. It feels the same. It feels the same for me. But obviously, I didn't... Well, I haven't really used a bow in a very in-depth way in quite some time. So obviously, there's a bit of... bit of, um, shall we say, unfamiliarity with the whole mechanics of, of using a bow. Because um, I think I, I didn't use a bow with the duelist. Uh, when was the last time I actually used a bow? Hmm. I am actually unsure about that. Could be... Hmm, probably not the Vlandian Knight, right? No, I don't think the Vlandian Knight. I think I used a crossbow in that. Or at least I tried to use a, a crossbow. I think I used a, a lance and a sword and a shield or something like that. That was probably what I used in that series. Um, Batanian Smith? Did I use a bow within the Batanian Smith series? Yeah, I think so. Maybe? Hmm. Yeah, now I'm now I'm not entirely sure. Now I'm now I'm having difficulties remembering all these things. Oh well, never mind. We actually took the town, which is great. That has further consolidated our territory, and it's made it so much easier for our supply lines to go through um Jamia Castle right there, which is really good. Okay, so what else is going on? Well, not much, as you can see. The Azurai are the only enemies we have. The Sturgeons have every single one of their towns still intact. Very surprising to see that. And then we have the Batanians who have expanded out into Epicrotia. That's the reason why they're quite strong right now. The Stur Wait a minute. The Sturgeons have actually 
expanded as well down into Rote, that's uh, obviously Northern Empire or Western Empire territory, and the Batanians are even going so far as to take Jaumaris, which is kind of crazy. Uh, Vlandians not really doing that much, as you can see. I think they actually... No, no, they didn't take anything. Okay, well, that's also strange. But yeah, it seems like the Empire is being absolutely cannibalized right now by all the other factions. Southern Empire, Western Empire, Northern Empire, they all have just three towns remaining and everyone else is just fighting over the scraps basically the azurai should be the next faction to fall and i suppose with that that will be the end of this episode i thank you very much for watching and i'll see you next time